Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you, as always, by tutvid.com. I've been away for, well, I've been sick for a little while, so I missed about a week of recording, so there's probably been around a week between the last time I uploaded a video. But if you're watching this video six months from when it was uploaded, you don't know the difference anyway. Uh, my voice is still a little jacked up, but it was really bad there for about a week. I'm so glad to be recording again. I really missed it, and I really felt... I just felt like I needed to get back and do some recording, so I'm very happy to be here doing this. Today, we are going to take a look at something very cool. This is a split sliced head effect, and here's a quick preview of what we're going to be creating. See, that looks pretty cool, right? We're going to be doing it all uh, using just a simple stock photo. You can take a photo from yourself or wherever and uh, go ahead and create this effect. So let's jump into Photoshop now and check this thing out. All right, all right, here we are in Adobe Photoshop, and we're gonna begin this thing by opening up a stock photo. I've got this one from Adobe Stock. Great stuff over there at Adobe Stock. Always gotta give them a shout out when I have a chance. They give me a lot of, uh, they give me a lot of images that I can use for these tutorials, and I appreciate it, and they got a lot of good stuff there. I'm gonna double click to open up this image here of, what is it, handsome, athletic, young man, isolated, on gray background.jpg. Very long, very long image titles, if I do uh, say so myself. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the new select subject option by going select and choosing subject. This is a new feature uh, in one of the most recent updates of Photoshop CC. If you don't have this, you can just use the quick selection tool. But you can see this creates a, a pretty decent rough selection around uh, what would be the subject here of the photo. It's missing a little bit down here by his arm and also maybe the edge of his hair could be a little bit better. But I think what we'll do is we'll go select, we'll bump this into select a mask and see if we can't clean this thing up a little bit. Really, we don't even need to worry about any of his lower body. We just need to worry about the edges of his head because we're going to kind of cut him off at the chin here. So we just sort of have a floating head effect. So I'm going to zoom in here and at this point, I'll probably grab my tablet and I'm going to use my refine edge brush tool. It's the second brush tool up and I'm going to go over the edges here, use my bracket keys to make the brush tool a little bit larger larger, paint over that edge of his hair. You can see we're getting a little bit of a better selection there. Maybe I need to touch up that little area. I can grab the brush tool here and I can just paint in my selection if I need to, something like that. Now, I don't want to do too much of this because I, I would prefer that Select the Mask does its thing. I can hold down Alter Option and just, you know, trim up here by his ear if need be. And you know what? I think it was actually kind of okay the way it was. I can still grab my Refine Edge brush here and I can just dab right there by his ear and clean that up and then come back in with this brush tool one last time. Uh, and it's a little bit of a labor of love, going back and forth, figuring out what works best for you. Um, and again, you can be as exacting as you want or not here in this process. So I'm going to go over the edges of his hair just like that. I should probably make my brush a little smaller. Maybe that'll help us get a little bit of a better selection. The hair color is also kind of close to the background, but you know what? No excuses. We're going to we're gonna try to make this as, as good as possible here. Uh, let's run over the edge of his hair here. Make sure we get that bit of his hair uh, run down along there. We can see it's a little it's a little wonky, right? And we'll just come down the side of his head this way. There we go. Knock that out. That looks pretty good there. But we had a better selection with our uh, select subject option. Now over here beside his chin, that's pretty bad. The side of the neck, that's not going to matter because we're gonna we're gonna clean that up in a moment. I'm gonna grab my brush tool here and I'm just gonna paint in just like that. Hold down Alter Option and just clean up clean up the edge, just kind of like that. That's all right. And then I'll just kind of smooth that out a little bit. There are global smoothing options, which maybe we could take advantage of a little bit later, but I don't know. I think they're going to kind of wreak havoc on the hair more than anything. Now, the, the exact perfection of this selection, uh, it's, it's not entirely necessary. We're going to be placing it over a background that's very, very similar to what we have now. So it doesn't at all need to be exact. I'm just more or less going in and cleaning up areas that I know definitely can use a, a little help. Right, like up here, that can be kind of cleaned up a little. Same thing across there. Uh, up here, this is a little bit of a mess, right? So we can just paint. I'm using the brush tool, by the way. I switched over to that. So this is just painting in the edge of that selection up here. This is just a total mess. And this is just where, you know, select the mask. It's, it's far, far, far from perfect. Better than it was, but still very far from being perfect. I'll come down here and clean up this edge as well. And, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to spend all day working on this selection. So we'll probably just ride with something, something kind of like that. And if I zoom out, we can see there's the selection. You get, you're really getting a lot of the background still. But I think we'll be able to kind of uh, work with that. We're going to output this to a new layer with layer mask. So output to, I'm going to say new layer with layer mask. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. And you can see we have this whole layer mask here. But remember, we don't need his entire lower body. So I'm going to grab the poly lasso tool. That's just sort of the straight edge lasso tool. And I'm going to make a selection here here underneath his chin like that just select the whole bottom half of this image just like that and once I have this I can fill this area with black we can just do something easy like edit fill and just say yeah contents we want them to be black okay and we have that mask selected hit command or control D to deselect and you can see now we just have his floating head and we do have a little bit of the neck left behind notice up here too the hair 
kind of looks okay. We can probably clean it up a little bit more before we get started, and we probably will. Let's make sure we have the mask selected by just clicking on it. I'm going to collapse my libraries panel because it's a little in the way. And then I'm going to grab the brush tool. I'm going to right click. And I'm just going to go with a standard brush here, uh, maybe a little bit smaller than that. Something like 80, I think, will work for this image. I'm going to hit the letter D to reset my foreground and background colors. And then I'm going to hit the letter X because I want to be painting with black. And painting with black, you can see, I can paint away the neck. Now, the opacity of my brush tool is at 60%. We want that to be all the way up at 100. Yours is probably at 100. I'm going to make the brush tool a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to go over this really quickly and just paint all of this stuff away. All right, I'll zoom out a little bit. That looks pretty good. You can see it doesn't, it really doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's all part of the effect. And then I'm going to look up here. I can grab my brush tool. And here I can paint with white. I can maybe, you know, thicken up some of the edges. Or I can trim down the edges. Maybe if I just want to kind of level out his hairstyle a little bit. Over here, this is a little crazy. So I'll just kind of try to dab that down a little bit. The same thing across the top of his hair that way. Uh, and then, you know, around the sides, if you want to soften it up a little bit, I suppose you could. I took a little bit too much off there. I gave him a little too much of a haircut, if you will. I'll just soften that stuff up a little bit. And you can see now we have the floating head. All right, I'm going to switch to my move tool there, and I'm going to drag this down to around the middle of the document. And we have the, the first part of our effect is created. Now, just to give me absolutely no backup or anything to lean on, I am going to unlock my background layer, and I'm going to drag it to the garbage. That's a little bit of a weird look, isn't it? I'm going to drag that right to the garbage, and we're going to create a brand new background. So what I'm going to do is create two solid color fill layers here. So I'm going to go first solid color, and this one I'm going to fill it with A8, A8, A8. There we go. I'm going to drag this beneath uh, the guy here. And then I'm going to create a second solid color fill layer. And this one I'm going to fill with uh, E3, E3, E3. So this is a much lighter gray and what I'm going to do here is grab my elliptical marquee tool and I'm going to drag a selection kind of over the middle you know kind of the middle of the the document like that I'm going to inverse the selection by going select inverse now I'm selecting everything except that middle area and with this mask on the lighter gray I'm going to hit command or control I so that's going to fill that part of the mask with black therefore revealing the slightly darker gray beneath it I can hit command or control D to deselect now that we have this very hard edge circle we want to make this more of a glowing center so with that mask selected I can open up my properties panel and I can just increase the feather of the mask. And I want to push this way up, like five, six hundred percent, something like that. So there I am at 575. And you can see, well, look at that. It's a nice smooth mask. Now, if you don't have the mask options in the properties panel, you can select the mask and apply a simple Gaussian blur, blur, Gaussian blur. And if you can only get up to a 200 pixel Gaussian blur, do a 200 pixel Gaussian blur three times or something like that. So here's our background. This looks cool. And I want to go ahead and make him black and white. So my favorite way to create a black and white is by using a gradient map adjustment layer. That's this little gradient icon in the adjustment layer uh, panel. You can see there we have that. I'm going to clip it to the layer beneath by hitting command option or control alt and the letter G. You can see not black and white black and white. I'm going to select both these layers just like that by shift clicking them both and hit command option E. That would be control alt E on the PC. This is going to merge them both up to a new layer and we can call this guy or whatever we want to call it. Now here's the fun part, creating the slices. We're going to create the slices in a little bit of a maybe non-conventional way by using the ellipse tool down here. We're going to choose to draw a path, not a shape, not pixels, just a path. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that this is set. Yeah, we'll go with combined shapes, I guess, since that's what we got. I'm going to zoom in on him a little bit. And I'm going to draw for my first select or my first slice. Now, if you're having trouble kind of conceptualizing where the slices will go, you can hit Command or Control R to bring up your rulers. And let's say, all right, we want to trim. We want to open up like the top of his head. We want to have a big slice here and maybe a slice down here. You probably want his eyes not to be split in half. So just keep that in mind. And then a slice down here with his chin. And then what we can do is with our move tool, we can just kind of tighten up where exactly the slice would go. So let's go right above the lips. Let's go like right beneath the eyes. Maybe I'll go a little bit higher here, really cut between his lips and his nose. Then I'll pull this down on his forehead a little more and just a little bit more of his, his hair on top. So we should have one, two, three, four, five pieces we're cutting his head into. I can hit Command or Control R to hide my rulers again. And this just gives us a general idea of where we're going to create our slices. Again, just if you want to have a little bit of a visual a layout of how you're going to slice up your object or person or whatever it is you're, uh, you're creating this effect with. I'm going to once more grab my ellipse tool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to drag out an ellipse kind of like this. Now, I want the bottom part of the ellipse to kind of click to or be as close to my ruler as possible. I'm going to shut off my properties panel for a quick second. And the important thing I want to show to you here is his head is on a slight downward tilt, right? Like if I turn the original image back on, he, he's dropping his chin a little bit into camera. 
and the, the sort of this top part of his head is the closest thing to the camera. So the bottom slice, we should be able to see sort of the largest amount of the inside of it, if you will. So this will be the thickest slice, and as we get closer to the top of his head, the slices will get a little bit thinner, just to kind of help complete that optical illusion. So just a, a little thing you want to think about, depending on the orientation of your head. If their chin is lifted up, the bottom slice, the top of that bottom slice, will probably be uh, what you can see the least of. All right, now before we go any further with this, I want to just make sure that the edges of this ellipse align pretty much as close to exactly with the edges of our face as we can get them. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to switch to my path selection tool. So that's the black arrow right there. And what I can do is I can free transform this path, Command or Control T, and I can just pull it out so it kind of meets exactly with the edge of his face. And I can look over here and you can see we're overshooting the edge of his face. I can just kind of pull it just like that. There we go. Commit that change. And I have my first path here. If we jump over to our paths panel, I can see that path here. In fact, I am going to double click this path and I'm going to name it uh, C for the C slice. And you'll see why in just a second. And at this point, we can either duplicate this path or we can create a fresh path. I think I'm going to duplicate the path just so I can make sure that I'm going a little bit thinner and I can always stretch it using free transform. So what I'll do here in my paths panel, I'm going to go and hit new path. I'm going to select the C path and just hit command or control C. Go to path number one here, command or control V. I'm going to double click on this path. I'm going to name this path M. I'm going to drag it above the C path just so it's, I don't know, just so it's kind of in the order that we're going to be using it. And then I'll drag this guy up and, and snap the bottom of that to my guide. Hit command or control T. Let's stretch this out to get out to his ear. And we can just make sure that we're getting kind of as close as possible. I'm going to stretch this side out and get out to his ear. I also have my paths set to kind of be pretty wide. If you want to get them a little bit uh, more precise, maybe knock them down to the default one pixel. You'll be able to see a little bit more easily what's going on. And I can see here if I zoom in, I probably want to take it a little further. It's probably a little bit better to go just a tiny bit too far than not get far enough because we're really going to be using these to help us create very exact selections uh, in just a moment. So there we go. Something like that looks good for that path. I'm going to hit Command or Control T one more time, and I'm just going to crunch it down just a little bit, not too much. And then I'll go ahead and create a new path over here in my Paths panel. Select the M path. Again, hit the letter A. That's going to give us our Path Selection tool. Copy it. Command or Control C. Select that path one. Command or Control V. We're going to name this path Y. You can see we're getting this sort of CMY for CMYK. Uh, we're going to take this. We're going to drag it upward. And I'm going to just uh, kind of snap it into place there. And you can see these edges really need to be cleaned up a little bit. So Command or Control T. Just nuzzle that guy right in on that side. Same thing over here. We'll bring that guy right in on that side. Great. And lastly, create another path. Select the Y path. We're going to copy it. Command or Control C. Go down to path uh, number one here. Command or Control V. We're going to name this path K. We're going to drag this to the top so we don't have our CMYK. And I'm going to drag this path all the way up here and just about snap it in place. And then once more, Command or Control T. Bring this in a little bit. Oh, let's make this path quite a bit thinner. And we're going to go back down to the Y path and make it just a little bit thinner. I forgot to do that a moment ago. Something like that. That looks good. Let's select our Y path. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to hit the letter A to grab my path selection tool. Command or Control T. We're just going to make this a little bit thinner. Kind of something, uh, maybe a little thicker than that. Something sort of like that should should uh, work just well for us. And I'll zoom out. And you can see if I deselect all my paths, it looks like we haven't done anything. But we have because we have this stack of paths that we're going to be using here. I'm going to save my document and I'll be right back. Okay, so this next little uh, section, you're going to have to hang with me here because it gets a little, com it's not really complicated, it's just difficult to understand. You're going to need to kind of follow along to see what exactly is happening. We're going to command or control click the C path right here, and you can see it loads a simple selection, easy enough, right? We want to be on the guy uh, layer, just like that. And then I'm going to grab my lasso tool, my regular lasso, not the poly lasso that we've been using, regular lasso, and I'm going to set it to the intersect shape areas, or intersect with selection, really, as you can see it's called. And I'm going to drag a selection here. Well, if I zoom out, I really can't drag a selection yet because we just have that little selection. We want to inverse the selection first. So go select inverse. Now you can see it's what it's doing is it's selecting everything except that little oval. I'm also going to shut off the guides. That's command or control and the semicolon key. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I want to drag a selection here just over the bottom chin area. It can be a rough selection just like that and then join it. And all we have selected now is the bottom chin area. So now if I cut this chin to a new layer, not by hitting Command or Control J, but Command Shift J or Control Shift J, what we've done is we've now moved the chin up to its own layer. Very cool. We want to now repeat that process for the rest of his head. So I'm going to make sure I select the guy layer, go to Paths, Command or Control click on the M selection, go ahead and go Select, Inverse the Selection, 
And because now the chin essentially has disappeared off that layer, we're just going to use that lasso tool trick. We're going to loop around just like this, something like that. I don't know if I quite got the best selection possible. Let me try that again. There we go. Something like that. Voila. And then command shift J and boom, we're going to have popped the mid face up onto its own layer. I can shut that off. I'm going to select the guy layer once more. We're going to go back to paths. We're going to load the Y path by hitting by command or control clicking on that. And we're going to do the same thing. Well, make sure we go select inverse to inverse that selection. Go ahead, bring it right out of there, up and around, enter, and then join that selection off. Command shift J. Shut that layer off. We got one last cut to make, and we'll have our head divided into five pieces. Command or control click on the K path. Once again, select inverse to just flip that selection around. Come through here with our lasso tool. Voila. Enter. And there we go. Something like that should work for us. I don't know if it's quite perfect. Let me try it again. I'm probably being too picky, but you know what? I'd rather be too picky than not picky enough. Let me undo that. Right up and around. Enter. There we go. That's more like what I'm looking for. Command shift or control shift J. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to invert the order of these layers. So the chin is at the bottom uh, and the hair piece is all the way up at the top. And then I will go ahead and I'll probably name these layers as well. So now before we go any further, we want to select these paths and create sort of the bodies of color before we offset the face, just so the body of color can move exactly with the slice we created. So let's go with the chin first. And I'm, so I'm going to shut off the rest of the layers there. I'm going to select the C path. I'm going to go back to layers and I'm going to say, hey, look, go ahead and create a new solid color fill layer. It's going to use that path. You can see right there and create a, a fill layer for us. And I'm going to fill this with the color uh, 05C3EA. So, you know, it's very cyan-y looking color. And I just want to make sure that this is right above the chin, just because we're going to be working closely, obviously, with the with these two layers. Let's turn on the nose layer. I'm going to select that. We're going to go back to the paths. We're going to select magenta. And we're once more going to go ahead and create a new solid color layer here. Uh, and this one is going to have the fill uh, EB0E80. So it's kind of like a very rich purple. And that's uh, not really rich purple. I need more of a magenta. Let's try EB. There we go. I think I said EB, but I typed 3B. I'm going to hit OK. There we go. That, that's more the color that I want. I'm going to turn on eyes. And let's create, well, we got to make sure we select the path, right? So the Y path. Now we're going to go for a yellow, probably more of like an orangey color. Let's shoot for. So let's try something like uh, FFA3, maybe 02. Yeah, that looks good. We'll go with that. And I'm going to turn on the forehead. And I'm going to select the last K. We're not going to go with the solid black. We're just going to do a very dark gray. So I'm going to go solid color here. And I'm just going to go like 222222. So that, I think that's good. That'll work for us there. And then if we turn on the hair, voila, you can see what we've got. So let's go ahead. We're going to leave the eyes kind of center cut. And, well, actually, no, let's leave the, the, the chin is going to remain in the center. So let's go ahead and take the nose and the nose's color fill. So I'm just shift clicking those layers and let's offset them. We're going to use our move tool here. Let's just offset them to the right uh, a bit. So I'm just going to pull it over maybe kind of like that, right? That looks pretty good. Something like that. Nice, a nice little shift. We're going to grab the eyes and the orange fill layer and I'm going to shift this to the right. Maybe kind of something like that. That's pretty cool. Maybe just a couple more for good measure. We're going to take the forehead and the sort of the black fill, and I'm going to offset this guy uh, to the right a bit, but not probably not quite as far as the nose down there. And then what I'm going to do with the hair, I'm going to lift the hair up a couple clicks, and I'm going to move it off to uh, the left a bit like that. Because we're going to end up like tilting the hair and kind of doing some stuff with that. You can see the selection up there. That really kind of bugs me. We might go through and kind of buzz that off as well in a little bit if it, if it really, really bugs us. But you can see now we, we've got the beginnings of our sliced face effect. The rest of this video is going to be really dedicated to just making it look a little bit more realistic by adding some shadows and things like that. So we'll have some fun doing that. And I think the first part of working with this stuff is going to be, let me shut off the hair. We want to go in and just tweak the edges of our ellipses and make them look a little more realistic. Like that's probably overshooting our hair just a little bit. So we're going to work with this by grabbing the direct selection tool, the white arrow there. And I can grab, well, if I select that color fill layer, I can grab just that anchor point and I can nudge it inward just a little bit, maybe nudge it down just a kiss, something like that. Maybe make it look a little bit more realistic. And the same thing over here, I can just nudge it over, maybe nudge it down a little bit, kind of make it just fade together a little bit more for just a slightly more realistic edge. So we just get nice, you know, more realistic edges. And before I go any further, it's kind of a creepy looking shot, isn't it? Before I go any further, let's add just a slight inner glow um, to these shapes. We're going to just basically create one inner glow and copy it across all of our shapes. Uh, let's go with an inner glow. 
And this is pretty much what I want. Maybe what I'll do is knock the size down to like 45 and increase the choke to like 20%, something like that. And let's reduce the opacity, maybe knock it down to like 8%. I think something like that is great. I'm going to hit OK. It's just going to add a little bit of sort of depth to our oval. You might like it. You might hate it. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to right click on this layer, copy that layer style, and then hold down my command or control key and select each of the other color fill layers. Right click and just choose to paste that layer style and we've added that inner glow now to all of our colors and hopefully added just just beginning to add a little bit of depth uh, to our effect here okay so let's now select sort of the 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 hair is the hair that's fine that can hang out there but the the K slice with the forehead we're gonna select those two pieces and hit command or control G to group them together and I'm gonna call this K slice for the the black slice select the orange with the eyes command or control G I'm gonna call this Y slice I'm gonna select the pink and I'm gonna call this M slice and then finally the cyan shape with the chin command or control G and I'm gonna call this C slice the reason we're grouping these up is because we're going to begin creating some shadows here. And I think I'm going to work from the top down with the hair, the shadow for the hair, and then move myself down uh, this whole sort of tree of facial slices. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the hair layer here. And the first thing we'll do is just tip the hair a little bit. So I'm going to give it a little, little tip of ruski like that. And maybe I'll bump it. I'm going to nudge it back to the right a little bit. And maybe set it just like that. You know, whatever. It doesn't have to be exact one way or the other. And let's add a new layer below. So hold down Command or Control and hit the New Layer button. And I'm going to call this uh, Hair Shadow. And basically what we'll do here is just begin painting a shadow in on the shape beneath this. Now, obviously, I want, let's say I use the brush tool for this instance. I'm going to reduce the opacity of the brush tool to like 10%. I want to paint with black. And um, let's say I make my brush tool quite a bit bigger using the bracket keys, right? And I'm, I click a couple times in here to like start building out a shadow that would fall on the hair below. Well, part of the problem is you can see it's falling on the background as well. Well, we're going to combat this by clipping our shadows to the layer groups beneath that we just created. And you do that by using the hotkey Command Option G. That would be Control Alt G on the PC. And you can see there it is without the shadow. There it is as we begin to build the shadow. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dab in a little bit more shadow there. And the, sh the shadow should really get thicker where the hair kind of is closer to our shape. And as I look at this, it really looks like this color fill ought to be nudged down one pixel. You can kind of see a little bit of a gap. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my move tool and just nudge it down. You can see that makes all the difference in the world. That's all right. Collapse case slice again. Go back to the hair shadow. I think I'm going to create a new layer above this. Command option or control alt G. And uh, we'll just call this, maybe I'll call it H shadow uh, 2 for hair shadow. And once more, I will go ahead and grab my brush. And I'm just going to dab in more here. I really, I almost want the shadow up here to kind of get solid black almost. Something like that I think would be good. And I'll go ahead and just paint a little bit of shadow out over there. A little bit more shadow down, something like that. That looks kind of cool. And if I back it up, you can see there it is without the shadow. There it is with. And there's still a little bit of a gap. And the reason that it, the shadow is not covering it up is because there's a little transparency there. So with the clipping mask, it's going to always show through a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the K slice. I'm going to select that color fill once more. We're going to nudge it down another pixel, and you can see that really helps a lot. Now, I nudged it down a little bit, so I'm going to make sure we're still looking good over here. And we are. Maybe here for the forehead, what I would do is, again, grab my eraser tool. I'm on the forehead layer, and I would just kind of erase away a little bit of this uh, to make it look a little bit more realistic. Let me set my uh, eraser brush opacity to 100. Something like that will be okay for us right here, right now. I go back to my move tool. I'm going to collapse the K slice layer group. You can see it just takes a little bit of finessing. And really, too, at this point, I should really consider just kind of cleaning this up. So here with the hair, again, normal circumstances, I would be adding masks. But I'm just trying to go quick and dirty. Let's get through this thing and make it look presentable as best as possible. Also, as quickly as possible, while I'm also simultaneously explaining how all this is done. All right, there we go. So I can uh, bring that out. We've got the shadow for the initial piece of hair. That looks pretty good. And you could also, on the hair, you could grab like your dodge and burn tools, probably burn in this case, and burn like the front edge of the hair a little bit. So that can kind of add a little bit more realism. Something like that can be kind of cool. You can also add the uh, the burning up on a new layer. That might be a good idea. So it's a little more non-destructive. Uh, but we're going sort of the, the destructive route here, if you will. I kind of like the way that looks. And now let's go ahead and do one of the more sort of structured shadows that we would have beneath uh, the, the bigger chunk of the forehead here that we've cut out. So I'm going to come down here above Y slice and I'm going to add a new layer 
And I'm, you know, I'm not even going to name this because it's just adding to our time here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to grab my ellipse tool and here what I'm going to do. Well, you know what? Actually, there might be a smarter way to do this. If we go back to our paths, I can command or control click on the Y and get uh, an ellipse that's about the size of what I need. It's not in the position I need, but that's totally fine. Here in our layer one, we're simply going to fill this with black using the hotkey option delete. That is alt backspace on the PC and then command or control D to deselect. Now I'm going to hit command or control T. And sort of the fulcrum, if you will, of the shadow is going to be the center left point. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to anchor it center left. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shift it over this way, just kind of like that. That's cool. Maybe bump it down a couple pixels. And then I'm going to pull it down this way, kind of like... I don't know how far down. Maybe I'll go like that far down, and then I'm going to pull it back upward, kind of like that, to fill in the head. I'm going to nudge down a few pixels, and now I'm going to nudge it back, or I'm going to rotate it back, I should say. It's still not quite far enough down his head. We're going to really stretch this out quite a bit. That's all right, and then we'll nudge down. The key is I really want the shadow to meet up a, a somewhat naturally with the edge of the head over here as it begins to cast its long shadow across the head. Again, don't mind if it goes off the head over here. We're going to clip this bad boy in place. Enter a return to commit that change. We're going to go filter. We're going to go blur. We're going to Gaussian blur this. Probably about 10 pixels, not 100. 100 is a little extreme. Yeah, I think 10 will work for us. We're going to hit OK. Uh, once again, I'm going to clip this to the layer beneath, hitting Command Option G. That's Control Alt G on the PC. And then we'll try reducing the opacity to like like 30%, right around 30%. See something like that that looks pretty good if I back out. Now we need to make sort of a darker sector of the shadow because you get more shadow the closer you get to sort of the actual ledge of his head. So we're going to hit Command or Control J to duplicate that layer. I am going to probably blur this again. So we'll go filter, choose Gaussian blur to give it another 10 pixels of blur. We're going to clip it, Command, uh, Command Option or Control Alt and the letter G. And I'm going to move this upward using my move tool. All right, now maybe I shouldn't move it upward so much as hit Command or Control T and just crunch it upward a little bit like that. Move our point back over. I'm probably gonna make the fulcrum of this shadow right around there and just sort of, I don't know, maybe we'll put it right about there. And I think I'm going to make this opacity more like 50, 60, something like that. Yeah, I think about 60 will work for us there. Maybe I'll nudge it upward a little bit more. Command or Control T, let's try to flatten that shadow out a bit more because that just works perspective wise. I'm going to nudge it up a little bit more, maybe nudge it over to the right a little bit more. This is where it just takes a little bit of finessing. And then come up here to filter and choose Gaussian blur for another 10 pixels and maybe another 10 pixels on top of that. And just kind of do it until it looks good. And I think that I think that works for our topmost shadow there. Again, there might be some work we need to do here. Probably shouldn't be quite as much of a shadow uh, right there at the base of the head. But I think we're going to roll with what we've got uh, for the purposes of keeping this tutorial moving along. I might add another 10 pixels of blur to that bottom shadow. Yeah, that looks kind of, I think that looks more right like that. And then we'll repeat this process and just kind of do it as you see fit uh, for the shadow cast here near his nose and the shadow cast over the lips as well. So I'm probably going to speed the video up a little bit here and just kind of try to blast through this a little bit. And I'll be back in just a minute. All right, I think that's pretty cool. I think that works for us. Now, let's say I'm looking at this and I got the, the hair a little pushed off to the side. Let's say we want to maybe tilt the eyes or the nose portion. By the way, you see that? We got a slight bit of a gap there. So we would come into Y slice here and we would select that top color fill and it just needs to be nudged downward a tiny bit, like one, two pixels. There we go. It just cinches that right up, makes it look way better. But basically what I would do here is select Y slice and then hold down Command or Control and select the two layers that are kind of have shadows cast on them. I'm sorry, not those two layers. The two layers that have a shadow being cast from. So the Y slice is casting both of these shadows here, right? If I shut these off, those are the shadows beneath Y slice. Those are the shadows. If the object moves, the shadows move with it. So we want to select all those objects. I just shift click the group and then shift click the, the bottom most layer there. Command or Control T. And we'll just, I mean, we'll just give this a slight little 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 tip tip like that and then I think we'll do the same thing here for the M slice I'm gonna shift select all of those layers command or control T and let's just tip this guy out here uh, toward the right just to just to introduce some uh, lack of uniformity to this whole thing as if we don't have a lot of uh, disjointedness as it is all right, now to really finish adding some depth to this whole thing, let's create a little bit of a shadow beneath this entire head here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to call this shadow. And what I'll do, I'll grab the, we're just going to kind of play this by, uh, play this by ear, so to speak. I'm going to create a nice little, a uh, nice little shape there. Fill it with black, alt backspace. That would be option delete on the, the Mac and then command or control D to deselect. And I think for this, we'll go filter. Let's try going blur and motion blur at first. 
and we'll motion blur it not at a 90 degree angle, but at a zero degree angle, so just straight left to right, and maybe I'll go like 650 pixels, I'll do it a lot, I'm gonna hit okay, and then we'll go filter, blur, and we're gonna mix in a little Gaussian blur now, maybe 30, let's try 30, see what that looks like, that looks pretty good, maybe not quite 30, or I'm sorry, maybe a little bit more than 30, maybe 45, something like that, it looks pretty good, and you can see we're getting a really nice, relatively realistic looking shadow beneath him. We'll push it a little bit down a little bit further. That's going to make his head appear to be floating further above our fake surface here. And then I'm going to just make the shadow not quite as dark. So maybe I'll set the layer opacity to like 80, something like that. And I think that works for us. Now let's look at adding some grain. We're going to add a new layer here. I'm going to call this noise. And I'm going to fill it with 50% gray by going edit, fill, Contents, 50% gray, hit OK. And then I think some of the best grain we've got in Photoshop right now is by going Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And you've got a lot of different options here in the effects within Camera Raw. So you got grain. I think we're going to go with a heavy amount of grain at a decent size. Uh, roughness, yeah, I think we'll, we'll introduce a bit of roughness, maybe a little bit more in the size department, hit OK. It's a massive image we're working with. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this, and I'm going to set my noise layer to, let's try Overlay. And you can see what it's doing. It's really adding this, this grain that's making the whole image look a little bit more organic. Uh, but it's a little bit too much. It's a little too heavy. So we'll reduce the opacity here to maybe like, I don't know, 35% or so. I'm going to duplicate this layer, Command or Control J. And I'm going to once again enter into Camera Raw Filter. And what I'm going to do now is just add more grain, but this time very small grain, not very rough at all. So it's going to be a very, very fine grain we're adding. I'm going to hit OK. And for this, I'm going to set this to soft light. And I don't know, we'll set it right around 30% opacity as well. Maybe lay off on the opacity of the really chunky grain beneath it. And we just have a nice amount of, it's just going to kind of add a little bit more of an organic feel to the overall image. Make things a little bit more realistic. All right, we're coming down the home stretch. A few color effects we're going to play with and we'll be out of this joint. Let's go ahead and add a selective color adjustment layer first and foremost. And I'm going to go to the whites within the image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the whites in the image by boosting the blacks. So by boosting the blacks, it's going to say, look, take the very brightest pixels in the image and just infuse plus 10% black into them, therefore making all the whites more like a very, very light gray. Then I'm going to go to the blacks in the image, and I'm going to reduce the blacks in the blacks by probably the same amount, but just the opposite. So I'll go like negative 10 here, and that you can see is really giving us this kind of interesting faded effect there. I'm going to close my properties panel. Uh, I think I'm going to add a little bit of a, a gradient here. Let me just uh, figure out what's going on here. A little zoom in, zoom out. Looks like Photoshop's not quite rendering there. If I zoom out a little bit further, that's interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new layer here. I want to add uh, kind of an angled uh, vignette. So I'm just going to call the layer Angled Vig. I am going to make sure my foreground color is black. This is kind of a cool little technique here. We're going to grab our gradient tool, and I'm going to go with the foreground to transparent. This is a default gradient, and because our foreground color is black, we're getting black to transparent. I'm going to set the mode here to multiply for the gradient tool, and I'm going to drag a black gradient in from the top corner. Something like that is perfect, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit and just ignore the weird rendering that Photoshop's given us, and I'm going to apply a much smaller, more faded black gradient to the bottom corner like that, and I'm I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to set this layer to the blend mode of like overlay. You can see that's really going to allow the noise to kind of shine through. And then I can just reduce the opacity of this gradient vignette um, just until it kind of gets to where I want it to be. That looks good. And now here's where I can have some fun with this whole thing. I can go ahead and do something like add a channel mixer. Here in the red output channel, leave everything at 100. Go to the green output channel, set greens to zero. And that's kind of a cool effect there in solid pink. And also set the blues to zero. And you can see we get this really rich, like, blood red overlay. You may be thinking, well, that just gets rid of all those colors we added in there. And you'd be correct. But again, we're just playing with some color uh, options. We could do something like a gradient map. And I'm going to open this up. Let's create a custom gradient. Whoop, I just uh, messed up on my trackpad there. Let's double click on the black stop. And I'm going to fill this with ah, some kind of, like, dark purple. Let's go, like, 3, 2, uh, 0, 2, 2, 3. Right? So it's a super, like, dark, rich kind of purpley color and then for the highlights we want more of a hot red so we'll go like fd and then just zero 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 something like that you can see that's kind of a neat effect that we've got uh, where we're really colorizing the image very strongly that way that's interesting um, or we could do something by just adding uh, not channel mixer what we already did channel mixer uh, something like a color balance adjustment layer here where I, I you know throw some red into the midtones maybe throw some blue in there throw a little magenta in there something like that go to the highlights let's infuse cyan and blue into the highlights maybe a little too much on the cyan there 
what is it? What looks better, purple or green? Maybe it's just a kiss of green. And then we go to the shadows and we pump some blue into our shadows, something like that. What looks better, cyan, red? I think a little cyan. Then maybe just a touch of purple. And you can colorize the image that way as well. And, and in this way, obviously, you're maintaining a little bit more of that orange, pink, blue, and, and sort of that dark color for the top slice. And of course, you can reduce the opacity if it's not quite you know what you want or it's a little too much or not enough or whatever, uh, you name it. You can combine, mix and match these. Or of course, you can just stick with that sort of original faded black and white uh, that we have. And don't forget to the photo filters if you just want sort of a sepia effect you could do that uh, you can always preserve luminosity and crank this thing up give it like a really strong yellowy color and then play with your blend modes so you can go with something like soft light and see what that does that's going to give us this kind of effect ah, I'm not, not 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 as huge a fan of that uh, but you have a lot of options here in terms of what you want to do uh, with the image uh, but really that's going to be it for creating this sliced head effect in photoshop well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. It was a little bit of a process, I know, but a pretty cool finished effect. If you got through the whole tutorial and you created your own version of this, I would love to see it. Make sure you upload it to Instagram. Tag me in the Instagram photo at tutvid. That's my handle. And I'll see it. It'll show up in my tagged images feed. And I'll give you some love. I'll, I'll check it out for sure. Uh, so, uh, oh, also, if you did enjoy the tutorial, well, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any tutorials in the future uh, for creating this sort of sliced head effect here in Photoshop and all the tools, tricks, tips, and techniques that went along with it to help us create this effect here in Adobe Photoshop. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Hudson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.